Hey guys, Jonathan Graham here. I have designed a new box. This is a rather odd shaped box. I call it the boomerang box. You can see it looks like a boomerang or a roof. Now a little magic trick you can do. These are this illusion. If you go like that, it looks like one is smaller than the other. Just notice that. But they're actually the same size. As you can see. These are from six inch squares. This is a box, by the way. You can actually open this up. And you can actually use this as a container. You could put something inside. It fits together quite securely. And that is the boomerang box. You can see how it looks like a boomerang from the side. So we need two squares of paper. These are from six inch squares. They also stack very nicely. I'm going to use these orange sheets for today. So first we're going to make the base of the box. And to make that, this is a variation of the traditional Masu box. So we're going to start with our colored side down and we're going to make our horizontal and vertical creases. These are six inch squares that I'm using here. So our finished box will be the same size as these. Now, I'm going to flip it to the white side and do a blintz fold, blintz space where we fold the corners to the center. We're going to do this on all four corners. Make sure you do this accurately so that you have a nice result at the end. Like that. That's this is now you have a blend space, and now we're gonna make some marks or uh, um, some mark folds or pinches. We're gonna take this point on our blend space and fold it up to the edge, and just make a sharp pinch like that. We're gonna do this all the way around on each of the four corners, and you'll see why we're doing this. Make a little pinch. Just has to be a little pinch. And now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this edge to that pinch mark. Make sure you have it parallel going across, just like this. And it's right onto that pinch. Crease it sharply. We're going to do the other side the same way. There's our pinch. We're going to fold the outside edge to the pinch. Make sure everything is aligned here. Now we're going to unfold these, keep everything folded like this, and do it on this other two sides. Again, the pinch we made, we're going to fold this edge to the pinch. Crease it sharply, and then we'll do this side as well, the edge to the pinch mark. So this is, this is one-eighth of the entire side of the square. This is one-eighth of this full width. Now we're going to unfold here, and now we're going to unfold here, and we're going to unfold here, and we're just going to fold this in again just to adjust the creases so that they all go the same way. And now comes a kind of an interesting fold. I'm going to open it up so it's like this. And now we're going to fold this in half. This corner will go to here. Line things up. Make sure your paper is nicely aligned when you're doing this. And now we're going to do some creases at the corners here. The first one we're going to do is we're going to fold this corner it's going to be a 45 degree angle crease to this point here, or this vertical line. So I'm going to fold this up. But we're just going to do a very gentle crease because now we're going to do uh, we're going to bisect this angle. We're going to bring this edge to the new crease we just made. This is quite a small fold, and really sharply crease this one, just like that. Now I'm going to do the same on the other side. We're going to turn it. By the way, we're going to turn it left to right like this. And once again, fold this up to the crease. And just do it sort of a gentle crease just so you can see it there. And now you're going to fold this and bisect the angle and bring this crease to that, to that crease and make this one really sharp. And now we're going to unfold everything. We're going to unfold here. We're going to unfold this one. And we're going to unfold it back to this shape. And now comes a sort of tricky fold. It's not that tricky. It's kind of like a petal fold. I'm not sure what it's called. We're going to do I'm going to hold it this way so you can see better. We're going to unfold. We'll do one side at a time. Let's start with this side. We'll unfold it. And now you can see this little diamond. We're going to reverse the crease going along the length of the diamond like so. And now we're going to bring this up. You can see one side of the diamond has a valley fold, a mountain fold. You want to use the side with the valley fold at the bottom. I'm going to turn it like this, it's a little easier. I'm going to fold it on the existing creases, and it's going to fold inside 
So from underneath it kind of folds like a little pleat like that. And you flatten this down on the inside. And that is going to make the... I'll just grab the, the box here. You can see that's going to make the center of our boomerang, if you will. And now I'm going to turn it around and we're going to do the same on this side. Unfold. There's our little diamond in the middle. We're going to just reverse the crease just in the diamond area. And that will make it easier. And once again, you kind of push this in, bring this down, and fold it in nice. And now for the ends, it's just like any traditional Masu box. We're just going to fold the creases on the existing creases, just like this. And fold this inside. There is the one side of the box. And then on this side, again, we're going to fold in on the sides, bring it up, and crease it in. And this is the box part. Next, we're going to make the lid. So then just sharp, sharpen your creases, make things nice and even. And there's your boomerang box. This, this, this is the bottom. If I, I like to call it the bottom since it's kind of the box part where you put your things into and then put the lid on. Now we're going to set this to the side and take our second square. It's the same size. And we're going to do, I'm going to speed it up just a bit. It starts off with a blend space. So once again, colored side up. Just like we did on the box, we're going to fold it horizontally and vertically with the colored side up. Flip it over to the white side, fold the corners to the middle. Same as the beginning. The first few steps are actually exactly the same as the the box. So I'll, again we do our blintz fold. Once again we're going to fold these corners up to the edge and make our pinches. This is exactly the same as we did on the first part. So nothing really different here. And once again, fold the edges to the pinches from the outside. That that indicate that shows where one eighth of the square is. So we're folding in one eighth on each side. Once again, unfold the other side to the centers. And now it doesn't change until we get to right here. Or just wait, fold these in, unfold. And now this is where it changes. We're going to actually do. We're going to keep this as a blintz fold, and you'll see why. We're going to fold this, flip it over this time. It doesn't matter which way it is, because it's the same all around. And we're going to fold it in half this other way. We're going to fold it in half in reverse. And now this is where it changes the most to the folding technique. We're going to take this. We're going to just use the upper one here. We're going to fold this up to the, mid, the upper layer to that edge. Make a soft diagonal crease. And then we're going to take like this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make a new crease going just like on the other side. We're going to make another crease. We're going to take now the diagonal creases here, and now we're going to make another little fold right here on the end, pinch it, and now we're going to make a new crease just like that. We're going to make a new crease just like this. So this goes right across like that. Okay, just wait. Uh, diagonal crease like this. And now we're going to change up the fold a bit. We're going to make the new crease like this. We're going to take this, this side here, actually, sorry, this side here. And we're going to bisect this angle right here with the valley folds. So we're going to go like this, so the mountain folds, sorry. Wait a minute, what did I do? I should have practiced this more. This is actually a difficult model to make, sorry, here. Like this, and we're going to change the angle of this. How did I do that? What did I do? What am I doing here? What did I do? Don't tell me I screwed up on a video. 
should have practiced this. And then we're going to make a new angle. Sorry, guys, I'm just confusing you guys here. There. Here we go. Here we go. You're going to bisect it from this side. Like this. There we go. And then we're going to take this side and make an angle like this. With the folded side toward us. And now we're going to bisect this angle down here. Like so. And now we're going to make a crease. That goes between these new creases. So this is, uh, And make sure all the folds stay together. And make a pleat. It's basically a pleat like this. And you're going to go all the way across. It's a fairly small pleat too. And now we're going to make the sides. So we're going to unfold this point. This point, this one's folded in on the end, that's fine. And now we're going to sort of fold up on this existing crease, just like so. Just like that. And then on the ends, we're going to do just like our Masu box, just like we did on the first, the base of the box. And then fold this inside. And now we're going to do the other side the same way. Fold this up, just like a Masu box. Make sure you can see that. And fold it inside, and this little corner tucks under this pleat here. Make a nice box. And now there's your lid for your boomerang shaped box. And just readjust the folds. And now you have your lid. And now you can take your base. And they fit quite tightly together. And you just slide the lid inside the base. Just like that. It's pretty snug, but that's okay. It'll fit together nice. Just go like that. And there is the finished boomerang box. Pretty cool. Uh, a little more challenging, but as you can see, I think it's really cool that you can stack these up like that. And it looks like a boomerang if you look at it from the side. So I hope you're able to make that one. It was a little bit of a tricky one, but I'm sure with very little practice, I'm sure you would be able to do it just fine. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.